Hello friends, welcome to Leg Life, and in today's Vlogmas video, I'm going to be showing you one of my very favorite things, and honestly kind of a new obsession of mine, that this Christmas I plan on using as Christmas gifts for several friends. Today I'm showing you how to roast your own coffee beans at home using only a cast iron skillet. <music> Now obviously you can go to pretty much any store in America and buy coffee beans. So why in the world would you want to roast them yourself? Um, honestly, for me, it's the kind of thing that, I don't know, I just like learning the art and science behind coffee roasting. We don't have a roaster, I do it all in the cast iron. To me it's just, I don't know, it feels like cowboy-ish, right? Around the fire, roasting your beans for your morning coffee, it just feels awesome. And so that's what I'm going to do today. And this process honestly is super, super simple, but there are some key key points that you need to follow. I'm going to go over all of those today. And the reason I'm doing this video today is that I'm actually making this as a gift for a friend here in the next few days. And so I thought, you know what? I'm actually going to show you guys how I roast my own coffee. So here's my cast iron skillet and we actually want our skillet to be pretty screaming hot. So I'm going to turn it on to high heat and we want it to get to be about 500 degrees. So a really really hot skillet. Now one thing I'd advise you to do right from the very beginning, this is really important, if you have a fan above your stove, turn that on to the highest possible setting because one thing you are going to see is that when you roast coffee beans in a cast iron skillet, they put off a ton of smoke. So you want to make sure you do this in a place with really good ventilation. And for this batch, I'm going to be using a fair trade organic uh, coffee from Honduras that actually was sent to me as a gift uh, from Theta Ridge Coffee. Some family sent this. I love the coffee from Theta Ridge. And so I'm going to be roasting up this Honduras bean today. Now when choosing how much coffee to roast, what you want is the bottom of your cast iron pan to be completely covered in a single layer. You don't want to pour in like cups and cups of beans because then what happens is that there's only, only what's being cooked really is the layer that's on the bottom of the cast iron. And so you end up with inconsistencies. Some beans are roasted less, some are more. And one of the things that we really want to go for is a consistent roast across across all of the beans. And so to help accomplish that, just a single layer at the bottom, normally that's between about half a cup or one cup of beans. Today I'm going to be doing one cup. So my pan is super duper hot. I'm going to go ahead and add my beans here into the pan, just like that. And then you guys, basically just start stirring and do not stop. Now, over the next several minutes, the beans are going to change color. You're going to start to see them morph. But again, you kind of want consistent stirring uh, so that part of the bean or certain beans are not sitting there burning, creating those inconsistencies. Now, over the next probably, I don't know, seven to 10 minutes or so, you're gonna see these beans transform a couple of times. They're gonna go from kind of the green color that they are at the beginning when you pour them in to sort of a yellow color, almost tannish. And then we start to go through the different shades of brown as the beans themselves start to darken. You know, one of the things that we love about roasting our own coffee beans is the fact that we get to control the level of roast on this. And so a lighter bean that has uh, maybe a lighter roast is going to taste nuttier. But then obviously a lot of people like a really dark roast and so they just roast the heck out of the beans. But with this, you get to control your roast, what you want, how dark it is, or how light it is, and we love that. In fact, you guys can already kind of start to see the color change on these beans. So Sherry's doing a little bit of the stirring right now, and actually, you guys may be able to hear, we're just entering first crack. So coffee beans are kind of gonna pop, almost like popcorn kernels. Um, and once they do that, this is normally like three, four, five minutes in. I think we're probably about four minutes in right now. And after the, uh, after the coffee bean has gone through this first crack, you pretty much can use it anytime after this. Um, but we're going to go for a little while longer, uh, not all the way to second crack, but definitely a little bit darker than this. Try to get more of a medium brown color on these. Also, you will notice a bunch of like, some of the shaft coming off on there. There's kind of like skin, almost you'd see on a peanut shell. That comes off, but we're gonna get rid of all that at the end. But for now, 
just keep stirring. So I just wanna show you guys the level of smoke coming off of this. So when I say that it needs to be in a well-ventilated area, it really, really does because this gets kind of crazy. Uh, so a lot of people will do this outside. Uh, fortunately for us, we have a really strong kitchen fan here above our stove, so it works pretty good. Now, as you guys can see, these are darkening up pretty good. Uh, the friend that I'm making this for likes a bit of a lighter, more mild roast. So I'm probably not going to do this actually for too much longer because these are starting to look pretty darn good. And the last thing I want to do as far as giving a gift is give like a jar of charcoal coffee beans. So I'm going to be careful with these. Now I want to show you right here, I have uh, some store-bought coffee beans. This is a brand that we really use a lot and love. Uh, these are pretty dark though, so I want what I give her to be uh, lighter. So honestly, I think I'm almost done because one thing about coffee is that you're going to want to take it off a little bit before you're finished because it will keep roasting a little bit even after you remove it. So I think I'm going to call this done. So then what I'm going to do is take my beans, I'm going to dump them here into a metal colander just like so. Make sure your colander's holes are not so big that your coffee falls through because that would suck. And then actually what you're going to do is just kind of stir, continue to stir the beans in the colander and you can actually see all of that chaff falling away. So the kind of skin of the bean that sort of fell off there is all coming out and basically what you want to do is continue to stir this until all of that is gone and nothing else is coming out this can take a few minutes because there is a lot of that in there and you definitely want to make sure you get it all and you can see a ton of that came off just like so so much so you really want to spend time to get that done right because you don't want that stuff in your coffee what you want is this right here and you guys look how good those beans look and again if you have a friend that's like you know what i like a really light roast i want something that's like almost green and nutty you can do that if you want a friend that's like you know what i want a dark roast that just tastes like charcoal <laughs> you can do that as well this to me is so much fun and it's so easy so the next step in this process is letting your coffee cool down and what's called off gas basically the bean now that it's cooked and roasted is going to put off gas for a little while and so you don't want to like grind this and drink it right now you want to give it like 12 to 24 hours before then but really between now and the next two weeks is when a freshly roasted bean is going to be absolutely at its best. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take these beans, we're going to let them cool down, get them to room temperature, and then put them in a container and we'll show you what that looks like. Now there's lots of ways that you could give these or store them. I love these like glass mason jars. So all I'm going to do basically is start to put the beans into the jar. And that is what they look like in the jar now. I need Sherry over here to put a pretty bow on it. <laughs> and then once the bow's on there, you've got a really great gift for friends. Something that you made, something you spent time on, something that you crafted just for them, for their taste and the flavors they love. This is one of my favorite things to give.